Hi, Tom. How Hi. are you? I'm all right. How are you? Doing great. Uh, so with a movie like this, I think what is most fascinating to me is that like when you really kind of break it down, the two male characters, like, like main male characters are kind of side characters in a way. And it is at its core a story about like three women kind of going on a journey and like their action story versus like the guys. And so for you, was that something that you kind of planned out throughout this and like with the script and everything? Or was it just kind of like what happened in the moment when you got like a badass like Gal Gadot <laughs> to lead the film? Um, I think a bit of both, really. <laughs> like, um, I think it, you know, it, it partly happened organically. You know, when I uh, there was I came on with there was an early version of the script, and I think because it came from a conversation that that, that Gal had with with Skydance, the production company who who made we made the film with, um, because it came from her. Um, I think it always that was always inherent in in the kind of the, the DNA of the movie. But then, as as uh, Greg Rucker, one of the writers, and Alison Schroeder, another one of the writers, kind of developed it, and we worked in the script further. Then obviously that became more nuanced and it, and it evolved. And yeah, I, I don't know. I think that one of the things that I really love about the film um, is that th that that it does feel like it. Uh, Rachel Stone does feel different from some of the other. Uh, characters in in the genre the bonds of the bonds you know like the way that she that she um uh meets the challenges that she faces is not through um you know she's not by herself and it's, it rests on her shoulders alone to to save the world she realizes that despite uh, in spite of her fantastic abilities and capability it's only by working as a team and our shared humanity that we're able to to she's able to um to to overcome the adversity she faces so that that felt like a really uh interesting arc in, within the genre yeah and also too it is so fascinating i think that um that like because i honestly watched an unfinished cut because it's so early but it it like in the beginning it said like a lot of these effects were as practical as we could make them and it is cool to see how practical kind of these stunts are and so when with something like that, where you're like mm, trying to balance the like, what can we do practically in a movie that has like that snow parachute chase scene is so kind of cool in the very beginning. What was like your the stunt that you were like most proud of that got to kind of come to fruition as practical as it could possibly be? Well, I think there's two. One is one is the jumping off the uh, jumping off the mountain with the uh, with the lit up uh parachute mm -hmm. and the speed riding that's when you um you parachute down the mountain with skis and some of it's in the air and some of it's um skis that was amazing they jumped off the uh the face of this mountain and went through these gullies and it was it was terrifying to watch but the you know the light was just dipping the alpine glow it was it was so beautiful and sort of seemed so effortless at the same time as you know they're coming within millimeters of of their death and that was that was heart in the mouth time, so there was that, and then also the the, the sequence where where they um, they jump the uh, the the cars, jump the steps, and avoid the trams, and they go mm -hmm. down uh, past the trams. And I, I remember standing there and talking with um, uh, my director of photography. And I was thinking like, can we jump these steps? Can we take these bollards out and have the car come screech around this corner, jump those steps, and then and we're like, no, they they're not going to let us do that. They, they'd never let us do that. Well, I mean, we could ask. And, and and then you know a few months later there we are and the, the cars are shooting down the steps and you know that was that was you think wow I can't believe we actually got to do that <laughs> when it's it is so cool again I do love that like Netflix has kind of become this home for like the action movies I grew up with in like the 90s and early 2000s I think we've went away from them for a little if they weren't a franchise and now it's kind of back with like, this and the extraction movies and those like star-led action th films that people love and with this one in particular I do love that it has that thriller element to it and there is a mystery that is mixed in with the action genre uh how fun was it for you as a director to get to kind of play with that like it's not just a straight action movie there are so many kind of elements that are working with this movie to make it as great as it is that was I mean really important to me you, you, you know ultimately the action and the spectacle is is, is wonderful but it's only uh, you only care about it if you if you 
are invested in the characters and the and the story, right? And if if, mm -hmm. if you not if you don't care about the characters, then it's just stuff that's happening on on, on screen. So. So yeah, right from the beginning, the the the, the characters and s stories and arcs were 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 the thing that kind of attracted me to to the movie. And so uh, yeah, that's that's fundamental, I think. You know, it's the grounded yeah. quality of it. That was always right from the very beginning. In the conversations I had with Gal, we always wanted it to be a grounded action thriller. We didn't want it to be too heightened or tip into the world of superhero. You know, it always had to be you know within the realms of possibility. And of of, of course, it's heightened. And of course, there's like some crazy sequences that happen but they're all rooted in reality it's all just about possible um, and that felt really uh, that felt really important yeah and I do love to like I love the kind of the, the card element of this like story is so fun to me for some reason I was like I kind of like that that they all have card names and that's like their thing uh you said you came in when there was a first draft how much of it did you get to kind of have a say in and like did you guys like playing around with like that kind of level of like spy thriller, not humor, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it is kind of funny that like someone's name is like the queen of hearts in this or king of hearts, whatever it is in something like this. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, that was one of the things we constantly had conversations about is, is how, how much to use that and how, and what's, what's that, what's that balance, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you want it to feel uh intriguing and have mystery and to be this secret organization but you don't want it to feel hammy or or too or too heightened or or um you know so it's a real that was a that was a constant conversation we were ha ha having um but then you, you know you look into the world of, of spycraft and uh and some of the, cra <laughs> the crazy shit that does actually happen in real life you're like oh that's maybe not that just so far so far from uh, the truth yeah tr that's very true and I do too love like I talked to Mateus yesterday and I love the like his, I like his roles a lot because he is basically the guy in the chair but you they are basically in this bunker the entire movie and what are like some of the challenges of filming th that whole sequence that is in just that bunker but it, it's still interesting even though they're in one room with a giant fan and that's kind of all they have going around them other than like the computers um, well, we spent a lot of time developing that sequence, um, you know, just in terms of because of, in a movie about technology, the, the, the danger is, is the technology is quite boring, you know, because mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to see just someone typing into a computer or, um, you know, going on the Internet or hacking. That only has limited visual possibility, I think. So we worked really hard to to visualize it. And that's how we sort of came up with this holographic volumetric space. Um, and then a lot of sort of. Uh, research and um, R and D went into in, into how we developed that, and so we we put the set together. We got the projectors. We we tried doing some of it for real, and then enhancing it with visual effects. And then we looked at what worked and what didn't work, and then we did it again. And then we developed a language that Matthias worked on with an act um, a movement coach um, to create this how we who was going to manipulate the, the the heart. And we we looked at different photographers. We wanted to make it feel as photographic as possible. So yeah, so a huge amount of kind of research and thought went into how we could create a um a visual language for for the heart for this computer um that was going to keep audiences um enthralled and and just to to represent what was going on in the movie to help with storytelling yeah and it, it worked really well i loved it um but for last quick question with a movie like this obviously like we love action movies so many people are that's what they want to go and see in theaters and at home too what do you hope audiences take away when they get to see Heart of Stone? Well, I hope they have a just a, a great uh, a great thrill ride and they're entertained and they have a great time watching the movie. But I also hope that it um, leads to some conversation and some questions about the nature of technology and the way in which we use it. Um, uh, yeah, I guess that's I guess those you know I think with all cinema you know you hope that there's it's doing a number of things at any one time that you're you're having a, you know it entertains um, and that it's, uh, it's enjoyable but at the same time it's it's asking some questions and it's thought provoking in in some way so that's that's what I hope you get both. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for talking today. I really appreciate it, and I can't wait for people to get to see Heart of Stone. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, everyone.